So here is my space-time diagram again. Remember that the black hole is sat here, stationary. There's the singularity. Here are the event horizons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to superimpose Rufus's world line onto this diagram. Now, we're looking at Rufus, remember, from the point of view of the black hole. So it's just sat there. It's going nowhere. And Rufus is on a journey towards the event horizon and beyond into oblivion. What I've also drawn are Rufus's light cones at various points along his world line. These mark out Rufus's accessible future. But look what happens to these light cones as he approaches the event horizon. They're tilting. Now, this tilt, according to Albert Einstein, is caused by the mass of the black hole itself. It's a representation of a central idea in Einstein's theory of gravity, general relativity. The idea is this. Mass and energy curve space and time, the very fabric of the universe itself. That curvature, the warping of space and time, if you like, is what we're seeing in this diagram as the tilting of light cones, the tilting of Rufus's future towards the event horizon. And look what happens here on the horizon. You see what's happened to the light cone? It's tilted so much, space and time are curved and warped so much that all of Rufus's future is pointing inwards, into the horizon, into the black hole. His world line is heading towards the singularity. There's no escape for Rufus because his entire future is inside the black hole. He'd have to travel faster than light to get out, and that is not allowed in our universe. This diagram is very beautiful. It allows us to see something else. It also allows us to see what happened to Rufus's clock as we watched it tick slower and slower and slower as he approached the horizon. So let's imagine, let's imagine that on each tick of Rufus's clock, the one on his back, a pulse of light was sent out and we detected that pulse of light from our vantage point far away from the black hole. So let me put them on. There. You see what happens? As the light cones pulse, then those pulses of light arrive at us at later and later times. This is the ticking of the clock. As far as Rufus is concerned, the clock's ticking away normally. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. But as we see it, the first second is faster than the second second, which is faster than the third seconds. Tick, tick, tick. And here, on the horizon, the light pulse goes flying up the side of the light cone, which is aligned along the event horizon itself. This pulse never reaches us. So time stops from our perspective. We see that frozen image of Rufus. He never makes it across the horizon from our vantage point. According to him, everything proceeds quite normally, although he's getting spaghettified, it has to be said, <laughs> <laughs> until he gets squashed on the singularity. This image of Rufus is frozen forever at the horizon. But here's the wonderful thing. The same is true for the collapsing star itself.